What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here, another episode of Out of My Element, where you guys get to pick the albums that I review. And the winner of this poll was Ariana Grande's Thank You, Next. Now, if you've somehow stumbled upon this video and you're not a regular viewer of my channel, um, let me be very clear. I have never listened to a single Ariana Grande anything ever. So everything that's stated in this video comes from my initial reaction to this specific album and nothing else. So if you've only come on here to get mad and complain because I don't know all of the history of Ariana Grande, you're wasting your time. Um, so you can either hang out here and listen to me ramble on, um, or you don't you don't have to, but um, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool if you stuck around. Now that that's out of the way, as I said, I've never listened to Ariana Grande. It's just one of those sixth sense things that I had where I just knew that her music was not gonna be for me. Um, the funny thing is quite a few people kept telling me that I like her, and of course I didn't take any of them seriously because y'all are so full of shit so often that I just don't bother paying attention. Um, but when this won the last poll, I was like, well, all right, you know, cool. We'll see how this goes. The first song, Imagine, it isn't bad, but it sounds like what I imagine most pop songs sound like. Matter of fact, when it started playing, even though I'd never heard her before, this is exactly what I assumed Ariana Grande sounded like. I guess the idea of the song is cool, you know, this this perfect love that she finds to be unachievable. Um, you know, and the song was listenable. You know, the beat's nice, it's not too overbearing, there's not too much going on, it's not all super dancey and goofy, and she sounds really good on it. Um, so it was cool up until the end where she does that super high-pitched screech thing, that shit that Mariah Carey does. I, I, I fucking hate that shit. I don't know why singers do that. Maybe it's just them saying like, look, I can do it, but that doesn't mean you should. Um, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard to me. It's, it, it, it's like the sound a fucking evil supervillain would have. Like, it's what I imagine Banshee from X-Men sounds like. You know, when he when he busts a real good nut or some shit. I don't know. Either way, all that aside, it's it's a fine song. The next song, um, Needy, is cool too. Um, I felt similar to how I felt with the first song. I, I like how understated the beat is and I like how she sounds really good over it. Um, what I like about her delivery is that she clearly has a very nice voice, but she doesn't feel the need to blow really hard and crazy and kind of overdo it. She gives you just what she feels you need for the song to work. And the content of the song is fine. It's about her feeling insecure about needing attention from people and to a degree wanting to know what it's like to be on the receiving end of that situation. You know, kind of wanting to know what it feels like to be needed. Nothing mind blowing, but again, it's fine. When it got to NASA, I started to get a bit bored. Um, I thought the lyrics were kind of cheesy and the metaphor of a girl needing space and the song being called NASA, it was a bit too obvious. Um, sonically, I guess it's fine too. It just sounded like a very, very typical pop song. You know, I'ma need space, N-A-S-A. -A. It was just fucking hokey. Bloodline wasn't super interesting to me either. That's not me saying that it's bad. That's me saying that this isn't the kind of music that I'm into. Um, sure, this sound is a bit more upbeat and dancey, but it just doesn't sound fun to me. Like when it comes to pop music, I'd rather hear shit from artists that don't take themselves very seriously, um, which is why I can listen to Katy Perry. You know, her songs are mostly stupid and goofy and brainless, but Ariana Grande comes off a bit too serious for me. And that seemed apparent with the, the song uh, Fake Smile, the whole fuck a fake smile. That whole thing, I don't know, I just really couldn't take it that seriously, but I could tell she was trying to be affecting with it. Um, but the cursing, I don't know, it just kind of seemed forced and it didn't, it didn't really fit. Um, I actually felt that way about a few of the songs. Um, but this is coming again from a brand new listener, so you can take that with a grain of salt. I don't know if she has a potty mouth with all her other music too. It's just with this, it just didn't come across that convincing. Um, and before you guys jump into the comments with your, with your goofy ass fuck shit, no, it has nothing to do with her being a woman. I prefer to hang out with people, men and women, who know how and when to give a good, old-fashioned, passionate 
meaningful fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It just didn't come across well on this album for me. The next song that jumped out to me was Ghostin'. Um, and this was the best song on the album to me. I think the really airy and cloudy sound worked really, really well for her. Like her voice sounded really good with this type of backdrop. And I feel like if the album was more like this and maybe the content was slightly different, I may have enjoyed this a lot more. Um, meaning if she went more of an experimental route, I could get more out of this album. Um, again, that's not me saying that it's bad because it's not in that arena. I'm just saying that that's what would make me um, like the album more. But sonically, the song was, was really, really cool. It made me think that she would sound unbelievable over like some clams casino style production but that's just my opinion and what the fuck does that even matter or mean nothing the content of the song was again it's fine there wasn't really anything that interested me like that the idea of being ghosted by a past relationship um i think ghosted in the context of haunted versus the person just kind of disappearing one day like that's the way we use the term these days um or or maybe it, it, it kind of meant both you know i know she used to date mac miller and i don't know when this song was recorded um if this was after his passing it would make sense that she she could be referencing ghosting as a sort of double entendre you know he vanished as in passing away and in a sense she was ghosted in two ways I don't know if that's what she meant. Um, if that is what she meant and that's what she was putting down here, then I think that that's actually pretty deep. The title track, Thank You Next, was kind of cool. It's an upbeat sounding song, but it's about her being thankful for her failed relationships because they all made her a stronger person. And this was one of the songs where I thought the content was actually pretty cool because I can actually feel that. I think heartbreak and, and shitty dealings with, with past partners, it teaches you a lot. Um, including what you're willing and unwilling to put up with. And I think those are really helpful learning lessons. It sounded like a fairly typical pop song, which is whatever. Um, there's nothing especially different or original with this song, but that's okay. You know, it, it works for what it is. And I just think the approach to the topic was a pretty mature one. The Closer. Um, <laughs> break up with your girlfriend, I'm bored. Um, I thought it was a hilarious end to this album. I mean, the song is it's pretty stupid. Um, it's basically the, the title says it all. It's her telling some dude to dump his chick because she wants to be with him. Um, it's a fairly funny and kind of edgy anthem. Now, I'm surprised no one's screaming from the mountaintops. Um, it's a bit more trap flavored which works for her voice and especially with the topic of this song. But I think it was a great way to end the album because it's like she's been crying and lamenting on this album. You know, she's been telling her her fucked up story and explaining to us how she feels about certain things that aren't the most happy things. Um, and now that she's got that off of her chest, she's walking out in the street and she's going after exactly what she wants even if it's somebody else's boyfriend. And you know, I guess I can respect that shit. You know, I respect the honesty. Do you boo, as they say. Overall, this album is interesting. Um, it seems to be all about her moving forward from what may have been some tumultuous relationships. Um, I don't know all the details and the TMZings of her ins and outs, and I don't really care that much. Um, but this comes off as her kind of coming into her own personality or maybe coming back to her personality. Um, I see her exploring elements of her sexuality, which is dope. I see her discussing expectations that other people seem to have for her. I see her kind of talking about what she's going to be doing to move forward from these situations. Um, as far as aesthetics and sonics of the album, I think the album sounds really good. I think she has a good ear for production. Uh, I think she knows what types of beats and instrumentals that she sounds good on, which is a definite plus. And I think she has incredible vocal control. Um, and she knows how to blend her voice with the production to make the songs flow properly. There weren't any songs in here that I thought were just trash tracks. You know, the album, it was entertaining enough. Now when I return to this album, 
No, I would not. This type of pop music is simply not my cup of tea. Um, as I said, I prefer my pop to either be really weird and off kilter or to be utterly brainless and fun. And Ariana Grande doesn't really seem to fit into either one of those categories, um, which is perfectly okay. Um, because that's not me saying that this album is bad. It's not a bad album. That's me saying that this doesn't mesh with my musical palette. Um, but I am actually kind of glad that you guys voted for this album, and I'm glad that it won, because now I can say that I know what Ariana Grande sounds like. Um, even if, as I said, I kind of already knew, because I got that fucking, that Miss Cleo type shit on y'all asses. But, um... Yeah, this is exactly what Out of My Element was created for. Um, so I can venture out and learn new things about artists that I would otherwise never, ever even give a shot. So, good job. Um, but yeah, this album is just not for me, but it's actually, it's interesting. I would love to see her do some things over some more airy and kind of cloudy production. I think she would sound incredible over that. She has a great voice. But as far as this one goes, the production that she uses, it's just not my thing. Um, but yeah, that's it for this edition of Out of My Element. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you want to vote on the next album, jump down there in the description section, go to that poll, get your vote on. But now if you want to be someone that can actually put suggestions for what I review, you gotta be a patron of mine. So sign up on that Patreon link that's down there in the description section as well. But that's it. As usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out, boy.